On a bright July morning in 2014 in the unsuspecting streets of Betton Hills, a heinous plot was set into motion. A place where the gentle rustle of leaves and the serene hum of suburban life were about to be shattered by a shocking crime. July 18th, a day that started like any other for Dan Markell, a respected law professor. His morning routine of childcare, gym and home was shadowed by malevolent forces. In his own garage, a sudden, brutal attack extinguishes a bright light in this close-knit community. Who lay in wait for Dan Markell? Was this a random act of violence, a bitter remnant of a troubled divorce, or a meticulously planned execution? As we unravel this tragic story, we discover a tangled web of family strife, custody disputes, and dark secrets. This isn't just the story of a murder. It's a narrative of fractured families, of love turned to hatred, and the devastating consequences of betrayal. Step into the shadows of Betton Hills as we dissect the chilling murder of Dan Markell. This journey is not just about uncovering a crime, but about piercing the veil of an idyllic community shaken to its core. Who was Dan Markell, a distinguished legal scholar and esteemed professor at Florida State University? Markell's world was not just about law and academia. It was also woven with the threads of a personal life marked by love, marriage, and unfortunately, a contentious separation. Dan Markell and Wendy Adelson seemed a perfect match, both brilliant minds in legal academia but the facade of this union crumbled, leading to a divorce that was anything but amicable. A custody battle ensued, bitter and prolonged over their two young sons. This struggle was not just about parental rights, but about power, control, and deep-seated resentment. Their divorce, finalized in 2013, was far from the end of their story. It set the stage for a tragedy that would soon unfold, turning a private family dispute into a case that captured national attention. July 18th, 2014, marked a day of unspeakable tragedy in the serene neighborhood of Betton Hills, Tallahassee. Dan Markell, a respected Florida State University law professor, began his day in a routine manner, oblivious to the dark plot unfolding around him. On this fateful morning, after dropping his children off at preschool and hitting the gym, Markel returned to his home on Trescott Drive. It was here, in his own garage, that the unimaginable occurred. Lurking in the shadows were Sigfredo Garcia and Luis Rivera, two men from Miami with a sinister mission. As Markel pulled into his garage, Garcia, aided by Rivera, approached and shot him twice at point-blank range. This brutal execution was not a random act of violence, but a calculated assassination. A neighbor witnessing the aftermath called 911. However, due to a dispatcher's error, an ambulance was delayed, arriving 19 minutes later. Markel was rushed to Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare, where he tragically succumbed to his injuries the next day at the age of 41. This heinous crime was not only a personal tragedy for the Markel family, but also the beginning of a complex murder-for-hire investigation that would reveal shocking ties to Markel's own family. Investigators started piecing together Markel's final hours. They scoured through surveillance footage, phone records and interviewed acquaintances. Each step was a move towards unveiling the truth in a case that was becoming increasingly enigmatic. The breakthrough came when surveillance footage revealed a vehicle following Markel on the morning of the murder. This clue was a significant lead, propelling the investigation forward. Surveillance footage and witness testimonies led to two suspects, Sigfredo Garcia and Luis Rivera. These two men, unknown to Markel, 
were now the primary focus of the investigation. In a swift operation, Garcia and Rivera were apprehended. The investigation then pivoted to a crucial question. Why would two men from South Florida journey nearly 500 miles to Tallahassee to murder Dan Markell? The absence of a direct link to Markell suggested a hired plot, leading investigators to Catherine Magbanua. Magbanua, the mother of Garcia's children, emerged as a pivotal figure. Her romantic ties extended beyond Garcia. She was also linked to Charlie Adelson, Wendy Adelson's brother, their relationship coinciding with the timeline of the murder. Intriguingly, in the months following Markel's murder, Magbanua began receiving regular paychecks from the Adelson's family dental practice. Each check bore the signature of Donna Adelson, the matriarch of the Adelson family. This monetary trail added a new dimension to the case, intertwining familial, romantic and financial threads in a complex tapestry of motive and opportunity. Catherine Magbanua's employment at the Adelson Institute raised eyebrows. No records of her work schedule or job title could be found, a curious gap in the otherwise meticulous business records. An operation known as The Bump was set in motion, a crucial turn in the Dan Markle murder case. This covert strategy was about to unravel a web of secrets. An FBI agent, blending into the crowd, approached Donna Adelson, Charlie Adelson's mother. He hands her a piece of paper, a printout of an article about the murder of Dan Markle, with $5,000 scrawled across it and a phone number. This orchestrated encounter is more than a mere exchange. It's a catalyst designed to trigger a reaction, to crack open the veneer of normalcy the Adelsons had maintained. As the operation unfolded, Charlie Adelson met with his then-girlfriend, Catherine Magbanwa, at the Dolce Vita restaurant. Unbeknownst to them, every word was being captured by the FBI, listening closely nearby. In the days that followed, a flurry of phone calls and meetings took place. The Adelsons, now alarmed, discussed the mysterious approach. Their conversations, laced with suspicion and fear, shed light on their possible connections to Markel's murder. Meanwhile, Luis Rivera, incarcerated on unrelated charges, was presented with a lifeline by prosecutors. A plea deal lay on the table. Disclose his part in Markel's murder and escape the death penalty. The stage was set for Rivera to shed light on the shadowy events of that fateful day. Luis Rivera, facing the gravity of his situation, chose to cooperate. His statement to prosecutors unveiled the grim mechanics of a murder plot. Rivera recounted the chilling proposal from his longtime friend Sigfredo Garcia. A hit was on the table, and Rivera was the chosen accomplice. The target, Dan Markel. The price, $35,000. Rivera painted a vivid picture of their sinister surveillance. They shadowed Markel, learning his routines, waiting for the moment to strike. Garcia, driven by an offer orchestrated through Magbanua, was the one who pulled the trigger. In Rivera's own words, the motive was as clear as it was cold. The lady wants her two kids back, Garcia had said, a reference to the bitter custody battle at the heart of this tragedy. Rivera's admission laid bare the dark reality, a life taken for the sake of a family feud. Rivera's confession took a darker turn as he described the haunting moments of the murder. He narrated their final approach, a coordinated ambush in Markel's garage. While Rivera positioned himself at a distance, Garcia moved in for the kill. As Markel, unsuspecting and occupied on his phone, parked his car, Garcia made his move. Two shots rang out, sealing Markel's fate. The pair fled, leaving behind a scene that would soon capture the nation's attention. In the aftermath, Garcia's first call was to Magbanua. Everything is done, he declared, a chilling confirmation of the deed. Rivera, overhearing the conversation, 
knew then that Magbanua was deeply entwined in the plot. The threads of investigation eventually led to Magbanua's doorstep. Charged with first-degree murder, her arrest brought one more central figure of this tragic tale to face justice for their role in Dan Markel's untimely demise. From the grave, Dan Markel takes down his killers one by one. Those who try to escape don't make it far. Just as we say at Crime Tunnel, you do the crime, you do the time. Magbanua faced charges of first-degree murder, conspiracy and solicitation. The trial, however, resulted in a mistrial, leaving the case momentarily unresolved. In a dramatic retrial, Magbanua was found guilty on all charges. She received a life sentence without parole, plus two additional 30-year terms, marking a pivotal moment in this complex case. Sigfredo Garcia, convicted of first-degree murder, faced the jury's unwavering verdict. After mere minutes of deliberation, they recommended life imprisonment, a sentence reflecting the irrevocable gravity of his actions. Luis Rivera, in a twist of fate, chose a different path. Pleading guilty to second-degree murder, his testimony against Garcia and Magbanua earned him a 19-year sentence. His decision to cooperate, a bid for leniency, shed light on the darkest corners of this case. April 21st, 2022. Charlie Adelson, the brother-in-law of Dan Markell, is arrested on multiple charges, including first-degree murder. This bombshell development pointed to a plot that extended deep into the fabric of a family entangled in conflict and resentment. As the case progressed, each court appearance, each revelation, peeled back layers of a mystery that captivated the nation. The trial of Charlie Adelson was perhaps the most anticipated. Charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and solicitation of murder, his arrest had been a turning point in the case. The evidence against him, including wiretaps and recordings, suggested his deep involvement in the plot. A significant development unfolded with Catherine Magbanua, already serving a life sentence for the murder of Dan Markel. In a stunning courtroom admission, Magbanua revealed she had perjured herself during her trials. She confessed her involvement in the murder plot a stark contrast to her initial defence. Magbanua acknowledged the role of Sigfredo Garcia, the father of her children, in the murder. Her motivations, as she revealed, were twofold. Financial gain and a favour to Charlie Adelson, with whom she had a romantic relationship. This bombshell admission shed new light on the case, revealing the depth of Magbanua's involvement and her connection to the Adelson family. It marked a pivotal moment in the ongoing saga of justice and betrayal in the Dan Markell case. As each trial unfolded, the pieces of this tragic puzzle fell into place. The courtroom became a crucible of truth, revealing a tale of jealousy, revenge and familial strife that had turned deadly. Charlie Adelson, once a respected dentist, faced the ultimate reckoning for his alleged role in a sinister plot. Charged as the mastermind in Dan Markell's murder, Adelson's trial gripped the courtroom with dramatic twists. Prosecutors painted Adelson as the puppeteer in a murder for hire, driven by family custody disputes. Despite Adelson's claims of being an extortion victim, his complex narrative failed to sway the jury. Adelson's own words in court, a mix of denial and elaborate stories of extortion, clashed starkly with the prosecution's evidence. His attempts to distance himself from the crime only deepened the intrigue. December 13th, a significant date in this ongoing narrative. Charlie Adelson, standing in the courtroom, was sentenced to life in prison. His assertion of innocence did little to sway the course of justice, as the weight of wiretaps and recorded conversations had sealed his fate. The verdict was decisive, guilty on all counts. A tale of betrayal and hidden agendas concluded with the downfall of a man who once wielded influence and wealth, now condemned by his own clandestine actions. 
Following his sentencing, Charlie Adelson was transferred to the Department of Corrections Northwest Florida Reception Center in Chipley. There, the process of integrating into the state prison system began, marking the end of one chapter and the start of another in his life. In the ongoing saga of the Dan Markell murder case, a new chapter unfolded with the arrest of Donna Adelson. The matriarch of the Adelson family, the arrest occurred at Miami International Airport under dramatic circumstances. Donna Adelson, about to board a flight to Vietnam, a country with no extradition treaty with the USA, was taken into custody. Charged with orchestrating the murder of her former son-in-law, she faced the same grave accusations as her son, Charlie Adelson. As Tallahassee grapples with the echoes of this tragedy, the Markel case continues to evoke profound questions about justice, family loyalty, and the lengths to which individuals will go to achieve their ends. The story of Dan Markel's murder remains a cautionary tale of how deeply personal vendettas can escalate into unimaginable crimes. As we close this chapter on the Dan Markel case, our thoughts turn to those left in the wake of this tragedy. To the family, friends, colleagues and loved ones of Dan Markel, we extend our deepest condolences. A respected scholar, a devoted father and a cherished friend, his untimely departure left a void that can never be filled. In times of such unspeakable loss, we are reminded of the strength found in community, in unity and in the enduring spirit of compassion. Dan Markel's legacy etched in the annals of legal scholarship and in the hearts of those who knew him, continues to inspire and resonate. In remembering him, let us cherish the moments we have with our loved ones and strive to uphold the values of justice and integrity he embodied. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Dan Markel case. May we all find peace and strength in the days ahead.